as I have said in the past, I am very, very excited about the theme of this year's feast, that it's called the King of All the Earth. That means his rule, nothing is excluded from that rule. It covers the entire planet and even more, it covers the entire universe. Now there's one particular aspect of this king, and this is that he is not just a king, not just a ruler over this world, but he also introduces himself in the Bible as a priest. That means a king, a person that is also uh, dealing with our relationship to God and also is dealing with the very sins of human being. In Genesis chapter 14, it's the very first time the Bible speaks about the kingship of God. When Abraham was returning from a mighty battle that he was fighting against enemy armies, the Word of God tells us that he was returning right here to this city, not far away from where I'm speaking right now. He encountered a almost mysterious figure. His name was called Melchizedek. And we read about him uh, the following, and he says, As he returned from uh, the battle and the defeat of Chedor Laomer, and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him in the valley of Shaveh, that is the king's valley. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought out bread and wine, for he was a priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him, saying, Blessed be Abraham by God, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. That means when this Melchizedek, this king of Salem, a short form of the city of Jerusalem, indicating the rule of God over the city of Jerusalem from Zion, when this king priest came out, he came out with exactly those two elements that we know so well. He brought him a cup of wine and he brought bread out of him, symbolizing the very sacrifice that was brought on the Passover feast, but also that we as Christians commemorate that Jesus sacrificed his life for you and me as he was dying on the cross. And this gives us a very amazing revelation over this king, that he is not just this supreme ruler over the world, but he also is a servant king, a king that came to serve mankind, a priestly king that bothers and cares about your personal relationship to the possessor of the heavens and earth, the God of the universe. The book of Philippians tells us, Paul was writing there, that Jesus Christ, he was giving up the glory that he had with the Father. He gave up, so to speak, his heavenly throne. He came down on earth. He completely gave up his glorious being and became a man just like you and me. And not only that, he says he was obedient even as far to die, and not just to die, but to die the most excruciating death that a man could die at that time. And this was to hang at a cross as the one who was the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of this world. And this is the king whom we are serving. And this is the king who we are going to celebrate at this year's Feast of Tabernacles. I already now look very much forward to join you and to celebrate with you and no other spot than the garden tomb itself in Jerusalem, this amazing king that gave himself for the salvation of mankind. And the Bible tells me that in this blood of Yeshua, in this blood that was shed here for 2,000 years ago, there is the same power today than it was back then. And this broken body that he broke for your life, there is the same healing power like the disciples experienced 2,000 years ago. So I want you to come to Jerusalem, celebrate the servant king, the king of the whole world, and experience the redemptive power of his blood and of the bread of his body that was broken for us, nowhere else than in the garden tomb himself in Jerusalem. I look so much forward seeing you celebrating the king of the whole earth with us here in Jerusalem, and I know you will be blessed as this king priest will minister personally to you. God bless you.